Pictures only appear on your television. Book of Spells is sold separately from the PS3 system, PlayStation Eye Camera and PlayStation Move Motion Controller. The idea for Wonderbook started many years ago in the early days of um, PlayStation 3. We had some technology for tracking markers, usually a, a pattern on a, on a card, and there were two game concepts in the running. One was a virtual pet and one was a, an augmented reality book. We started with iPet because it only really involved tracking one marker. Then as iPet started ramping down, we looked at, well, how we've made the technology now, so can we reuse this to, to create the book? And if you if you look at a wonder book, you'll notice that this same kind of marker design is repeated across each of the pages. And so this core technology on iPet formed the foundation for the technology on Wonderbook. We often describe it as looking in a magic mirror. So you look at the TV screen, you see everything, but all these other amazing things can come out of the book. The technology tracks the book. A good analogy is you have signals coming in through your eyes that your brain interprets and makes sense of, so you can see a person or an object, and that's what we're doing in Wonderbook. The signal comes in to the camera, and we analyze it to look for the book and track it, and then superimpose the graphics. With iPet, all we had to do was track and recognize this one marker, and also because it had a handle on the back, it meant that no one ever sort of put their hand in front of it because you held it from behind. This book is more than just a bunch of markers stuck together. You can occlude two pages while you've got the markers there and it still works. You can turn a page and occlude a marker and it still works. You can see where the book is underneath the pages that don't even have a marker on and create a fully augmented experience for the entire book. Wonder Book really fitted into becoming a spell book. And of course, the Move Controller naturally became your wand. They're very simple user interfaces, very one-to-one -one movements. This whole idea, you're a wizard, uh, you need a magic wand and a spell book. It was match made in heaven. You've actually got a book in your living room. You're actually sitting there as a family together around a book that comes to life. That's never been done before. It allows players to actually role play, to actually become part of the experience. And of course, in the Book of Spells, that means you becoming a wizard. Images coming out of the book are not real and only appear on your television screen. In the beginning of the game, you're in the Hogwarts library and you immediately meet this character, the professor, who is hopefully like the best teacher you've ever had. So the book is split into five chapters and each chapter represents um, qualities of a wizard. So it could be importance of practice, any, any kind of attribute that a young wizard or witch would need to progress in the wizarding world. So once we had that kind of skeleton of these five chapters, and, and a theme for each one, then we tied in four spells per chapter. So the first thing uh, the player might do is learn the incantation for the, the incendio spell, for example. So they have to repeat the words on, that are shown on the screen. And then the next stage is to perform a gesture, which is a simple shape drawn with the move controller. And then they might go into a, into a practice environment where they fight some magical creatures with this new spell. Once you've learned those four spells, there's an end of chapter test which will then test you on those spells. And that will take you through kind of many different areas that have tasks that require you to use all of the four spells that you've learned in that chapter. When you first cast a spell, a uh, spell effect appears on the end of your wand. So you can immediately tell what spell you have cast. 
So for example, the Aguamenti spell, which is the water spell, is a blue bubbling orb on the end of it. And when you pull the trigger of the motion controller, this orb turns into water spraying out from the end of your wand. You're also given backstories and histories to these spells, and they're played out within a paper theatre. I wanted something that was of the book, but was also quirky, funny, playful in itself. So I think what we've got now is, is I think some people have described it as a reinvention of the book. It's the first time that we've put the magic wand in your hand, we've put the spell book in your hand, and you get to be the one casting all of these really iconic spells. <laughs> Images are not real and only appear on your television screen. The creatures in the Book of Spells are created from the text and the illustrations of the book. When developing the creatures, we start off with a design from the uh, game designers, um, outlining where they're going to be used in the game. From there, I would sit down and work with a concept artist to uh, flesh out initial sketches and ideas what these things are going to look like. You've got the initial uh, model, what it looks like, its form, its structure, its colouring, and then we need to try and make it move. When we get involved, obviously, we, uh, we have to allow these characters to move. We have to give them the means to do that. And um, for that we build a uh, skeleton that you can basically place inside that model. Um, once that's complete, we can then um, effectively automate parts of that skeleton. Um, so you can put a control on the hand and then when you grab that control, you can just move it around like that and it's nice and easy, it just works itself out. Um, we do that with the whole character and, uh, and then when we're finished with that, we can pass it over to the character animators. My favourite part in, in, in animation is, is actually the, the planning, the, the research and, and going and thinking about the character and the, and the personality and, uh, and what they would think, um, how they would act and how it, they would you know, specifically react to, to a certain situation. And then once we have this creature, it's got certain animations, then I will you know, combine these together and it really brings that original concept to life. I think one of my favourite creatures to develop was the dragon, mostly because it was the first creature I got my hands on, so I could experiment a bit and see what worked and what didn't work. And I discovered I could combine different animals to make a new one. So, for example, with the dragon, I combined a leopard, a vulture and a pig to make the dragon's voice. But the dragon's movements and wing flaps were actually sourced from fire sounds. So anytime you hear a dragon flapping his wings, it's actually the sound of a fireball. The characters definitely go through uh, a, a process of development where they might start off, we might think of them in one way at first, and then as we work through the through the situations that they're in, we might think of different, the more entertaining ways for them to sort of express their, their personalities. I think the reason kids love creatures, and especially creatures in games, is because of their fantastical nature. You know, they take you to another world, 
Um, you don't see them in everyday life. Um, so to come up against them and, and see how they actually uh, move and how they react is, is something that kids really love. Game is sold separately from console, eye camera, and move controller.